I don't think I'm a master of commercial real estate. I think I'm a master at finding tenants. I think you're right. I think it's not so much that they don't find the time to do it because they could make the time. They don't think there's a need for it. And I think it's Warren Buffett who said that if you don't find a way of earning passive income, then you're condemned to working for the rest of your life. And these high income earners that you refer to, they, they do, they make a lot of money. They might make six digits in a year and they think, well, this is good and it's easy and I love my work and I love my family. Why would I change anything? And the challenge is the world does change. And as you get on through life, as the years advance, you realize, my gosh, this thing has changed a lot. You know, to give that some perspective, I got a, a Bachelor of Engineering degree. I went on to do a PhD, but I got my Bachelor of Engineering degree before the PC was invented. And the, the thought of how is that even possible, I don't know. I think the thought for young people now about how we survive without a cell phone or a mobile phone, it's impossible. But, you know, most of us remember a time before they existed. So the world does change. It changes rapidly. And I had a personal experience where I'd written a number of books that did very well. I was blessed to be on the New York Times bestseller list and bestseller list in, I think, 15 countries. So the royalties were huge. I was making six digits a quarter from book royalties. And I thought that would never end. In fact, I even thought if I write just one or two extra books every few years, then I would add to that income and it would continue going up in a sort of step function manner. But what happened is book readership started to decline massively. The number of bookstores in this country went from over 40,000 to now under 6,000. Walden Books is gone. I think um, Borders is still around, but Barnes and Noble is gone or the other way around. But they're, they're, they're falling off at a rapid rate. People aren't reading books anymore. We're on Twitter and TikTok and, and Instagram and you name it. And I'm not passing judgment on that, but my royalties from uh, books went to under $500 a quarter. I haven't had a check over $500 in, I think, six years. And, you know, we can lament it or, you know, stamp our foot or something like that, but the world changes. So if you've got a, a very powerful job right now with a big salary, you may not have that forevermore. That's why I think it's incumbent on all of us to think in terms of converting whatever assets we've got or whatever income we've got into passive income. My passion is investing in real estate, and that's what I share with anyone who wants to listen, why I believe they do very well to get into real estate as, as well. And the books are part of that sharing. I, I'm not an author. I never thought of myself as an author. In fact, people would often say to me, you're an author, right? And I'd say, no, not really. I'm a, a real estate investor. And they'd say, but you've got books on the New York Times bestseller list. You are an author. And I'd say, I, I guess technically I am. So I'm in real estate. And even though I had books describing it, now we're joking about the fact that I lost my passive income through books. Well, books weren't my, mm. by design, something to generate passive income. Right. I truly believe that real estate generates the passive income. And in the scenario you presented as an example of how you could lose passive income, you just said a moment ago, oh, Dolph, I've lost my tenant. What do I do? Losing a tenant to me is a great problem to solve. In fact, often when I look for real estate, I don't look for a tenanted building because, and especially in the commercial world, if a building has a tenant in it, then the value of that building, the price I have to pay to acquire it, reflects the fact that it's got a rent paying tenant in there. I'll pay top dollar for it. I love vacant buildings and I hunt down and look for vacant buildings or semi-vacant buildings. Not that I want to buy them. And you might think, well, there's an anomaly. You look for them, but you don't want to buy them. No, I don't want to buy vacant buildings because then I've got the problem that the current owner has. He can't get a tenant and he can't sell it. And therefore the price comes down. But I will look for vacant or semi-vacant buildings and then I'll set about finding a tenant for it. And if I can find a tenant for a vacant building, then I'm in because it's just the mathematical reality of commercial real estate that the value of a commercial building is a multiple of its rental income. So let's say the, the building is half tenanted and it's generating 100,000 in rent. And let's just imagine for the sake of argument that cap rates, which is how the market values a building, they're 10%. So with 100,000 of income, it's half full, and 10% cap rates, the value of that commercial building is a million. I'm interested in it at this stage because it's semi-vacant. I won't buy it yet because if the bank only gives me a 50% mortgage, 50% of the value of a million is half a million and I need a million to buy it. But what I will do is go looking for a tenant for that vacant space. And imagine I find a tenant who's also willing to pay 100,000 for the other half 
Now my total rental income would be 200,000. The cap rate hasn't changed at 10%. The value is 2 million. I go to the bank with an appraisal for 2 million. They say, well, we agree it's worth 2 million, but we're only going to give you a 50% mortgage. And now 50% of the new appraisal of 2 million is 1 million. That's my purchase price. I can buy it without putting any of my own money in. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, in this very streamlined imaginary case, that's essentially how I can buy commercial buildings without having cash. I don't think I'm a master of commercial real estate. I think I'm a master at finding tenants. And yeah. when I deploy that in the commercial real estate realm, I can create value where others don't. And it's not just vacant. Let's say you've got a premise that's got a thrift store there. And nothing wrong with having a thrift store as a tenant, but they're usually not haute couture or the high end of things. So they might be paying $12 a square foot in rent. Just imagine that. And then their rent is, uh, their, their lease is coming to an end and they are inclined not to renew the lease. Now, if I had no other tenant that could occupy that space, I might try and talk them and give them an incentive, some tenant improvements or keep the rent at the current level and not bring it up to market something. But if I know that that's a really good location and it's got good foot traffic there and there are lots of offices around with office workers who would like to have a morning cup of tea or coffee, probably coffee or afternoon coffee or something and go there for lunch, then I might think it's a great location for a coffee shop. Mm. And a coffee shop might be willing to pay 24 or $25 a foot. So I won't renew the lease with the thrift store. They probably didn't want to renew it anyway. I'll get the coffee shop in there. And at $24 a foot, that's double the rent of the thrift store. So the value of at least that portion of the commercial building goes up. It, it doubles yeah. because the rent's double. So it's not just finding a tenant for a vacant spot. It might be finding a better tenant.